did Colin Morikawa cheat? This whole thing is interesting, and it goes back farther, much farther than the Hero World Challenge. Matt Fitzpatrick rats out Colin Morikawa and his caddy, JJ, for using a device that they shouldn't have been using. Well, sort of, it gets complicated. All right. But the question is, did Matt Fitzpatrick do this on purpose to get back at Colin Morikawa? Do you think there's some bad, is there some bad blood here? Because here's the deal. Back at the Masters on the sixth hole, remember there was a time where Morikawa and Fitzpatrick were playing together. Morikawa was over his putt and his ball moves, but we, no one really sees it move or whatever. And then he throws his mark down and he moves his ball like a few inches forward and places it down and then um, putts, makes par, moves on. And Fitz Fitzpatrick's standing there watching this whole thing. Did he just say, what in the world, this guy, why would he do that? Like, what would he do? Like, maybe he thought Colin deserved a penalty for addressing his ball and causing it to move. Like, maybe he thought he bumped it and the ball moved and then he replaced it. Like, if your ball just moves, you could put it back. No penalty. But he addressed it. He's over. Like, maybe he thought he caused it to move and he, he was due a penalty, which he never got. So that was Fitzpatrick and Colin Morikawa back at the Masters. So now, <laughs> this past week, Morikawa, his caddy, JJ, is on the practice green with a level. He's got an aim point system, you know, the whole whatever. And um, he uses a level. You have a level that you use to calculate slope so that then you can then transfer that into how many inches or feet of break you're going to play based on the slope uh, of the green. So, you know, if it's one, two, three, four, whatever, that's how you do it. And you can use a level. You could take this level out onto the golf course during practice. You could measure the greens. The thing you can't do, though, is you cannot make notes into your, your, your booklet, your green, your green book, your yardage book. You can't make handwritten notes to determine slope. Remember, they used to have... They used to give these players these green reading topography charts. And so these guys would pull these things out. And I mean, you remember, we would see like guys studying this giant piece of paper on the green to figure out the break of every green. Well, they no longer do that. So green reading is an integral, integral, integral part of playing the game. Like it's part of the skill that's required. You have to be able to read a green. But, well, you can take your level out there. You could practice round with it or whatever. And, but you just can't write in your notebook what it does. You have to remember it. So caddies and players, they all know this. It's no secret that you can't do this. They know this was implemented back in like 2022. So they've had 2022, 2023. They've had a couple years of this. They know. Okay. Now, He's on the, JJ, his Collins caddy is on the practice green with a level before the round uh, or during, whatever. There, he's practicing with the level. That's fine. You could do that. And then he makes some notes on his booklet. And Fitzpatrick sees this. He was a witness. He said, oh, what's he doing? <laughs> now, a real person, a true person, person like me you know well i hope i would do this. i would do this and i would hope that somebody would do this for me and it's happened to me somebody's come up to me like hey matt just so you know you can't do that like that that's a break of the rules i'd hate for anything you know i hate for you to get penalized why fitzpatrick why didn't he go up to jj collins caddy and say dude hey um i don't know if you know this but you're not allowed to do that. That's against the rules. They're going to penalize you if you do. I'd hate to see that happen. Why don't you just, man to man, why don't you just go up to a dude and say, hey, I saw, you can't do that. Why don't you talk to people? What's wrong with that? Like, why didn't he do that? I don't know. Why wouldn't, I would do that. I would want somebody to do that to me. But Matt Fitzpatrick, 
I'm not casting any judgment on the guy. I don't know the guy at all. And, but I would hope, well, I, but I don't know why he didn't do that, but he didn't do that. But did he do that? I don't think he did it. And then why didn't he go to Colin? Go to Morikawa even. But I would go to the person that I saw first and say, dude, you can't do that. So did he or did he not do that? We don't know. No one had said he did it. We know that Fitzpatrick said he talked to an official later, like after the round. So even during the infraction. So even Fitzpatrick sees the infraction there on the fourth green where his caddy pulls out the book. He's looking at it, getting his notes like, hey, this is a one percenter here. It's the same as the one I measured. And therefore, it's going to do this. Well, okay. Subsequently, they assess him a two-stroke penalty. Now, again, Fitzpatrick had an opportunity to say it then. But he didn't. Why not? Why wouldn't you just say, hey, dude, that's a two-stroke penalty. What are you talking about? Did you use your book and you got notes in your book from when you were on the putting route with the thing? That's two strokes. He didn't even do it. So... That was the only time that that occurred. And Fitzpatrick saw it and turns him in after. What happened if he did it on every other green that day? That's two strokes per green, per infraction. It could have been a huge, <laughs> luckily it was only two stroke penalty. It could have been much, much worse. And it wasn't. So why? The, qu the, the question isn't, was he cheating? Was I don't know if he was cheating or if there's intentional. There's ways around that anyways. You could just memorize everything for the week. You could do that. You could have some other type of note-taking system, which I'm sure other caddies have that don't necessarily show that you're cheating, but a little dash, chart, the this, that, whatever. This is how we kind of tell each other what it is without writing it down. You could do that too. There's all kinds of ways to cheat if you want to cheat. That's easy to not get caught. So the question is, why would Fitzpatrick, one, not talk to the caddy, not talk to Morikawa, and then not talk to him right when it happened? Like, if you're playing with somebody, I played in a number of events where you're like, hey, dude, I would say, like, that could potentially have been a penalty. I don't know. Like, I'm going to just make a note here that we can, um, and we'll talk about it after the round with the official. But I just want to bring it up. I've said that. Like, dude, let's, I'm just going to make, make a note. We'll deal with it later. That's what you do. But he didn't do that. He waited till after. So, like, the next day, the official will say, hey, we need to talk to you. That's kind of that's kind of sleazy in my book. Like, dude, why don't you just talk to me, man? Like, why didn't you just say something? You saw it. When you, you see something, you say something, right? See some, say some. That's just standard operating procedure, mono y mono. Just bring it up, dude. Be a man. Just say it. Say something. I don't know why Fitzpatrick didn't do that, but then you rewind back to the Masters. Maybe he's looking for something. I don't know. All I know is what we know, and that's what we know, and what we know happened at the Masters happened too. So you let me know what you think, but... Either way, I think you should have talked to him. There you go.